Okay, welcome to Salmon Cast, the podcast 100% fueled by wild seafood. And I think that that has never rang true more than today because we're going to do a wrap up on our fishing in February vlog series where our team members who are all in the room today have participated at various levels of seafood consumption for the month. So to get started, for those of you listening and cannot see, uh, we'll introduce who's in the room and the um, voices that you hear. So uh, Megan, Jen, Steve, Aubrey, Courtney, and Dustin. And just so everybody remind or remind the listeners who maybe haven't seen the vlog series or to refresh their memories on what level of consumption everybody did for the month um, or that they committed to do for the month. We don't know 100% that any, everyone succeeded. <laughs> but um, So I'll start. I committed to 100% seafood for my primary protein source for the month, which averaged close to, I think I figured out this morning, about 21 meals a week of protein protein sources 21 times average some weeks with a little less um courtney i committed to two to three times a week aubrey i also committed to two to three times a week the curians uh we committed to five to seven per week megan i also did the five to seven great so a nice uh, plethora of sample size here. Um, to get started this morning, um, just to go through it, I thought it'd be interesting, and hopefully everybody remembers this. So we'll start um, with Megan, um, and then we'll work around the table. Do you remember what the first seafood meal you had this month, and what was the last one you had yesterday, or the last time you had it? Yeah, the first, well, I mean, a lot of the month for me, and I'm sure the first one was smoked salmon, because I don't need an excuse to, to eat that <laughs> several times a week. Um, so I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I just added that into my breakfast, like right off the bat. Um, and then the days that I was running behind or didn't feel up to making breakfast, I did something else, but I'm sure it was uh, some sort of smoked salmon. And then the last one was, um, I made like a shrimp and like stir fry, like a shrimp stir fry last night to sort of end it out. Great. Curians. I remember the very first day of February, we had salmon burgers for breakfast because Ava was so excited to be part of fishing in February that she wanted to be videoed cooking her own salmon burger. <laughs> so we started the month off with salmon burgers for breakfast. And then last night, we had a culminating meal of king sam or king crab. Ooh. Ooh. So we went out with a bang. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Link to Ava's how to cook a salmon burger video in the uh, comments. Yeah. Ava did a cooking tutorial for us on how to make a salmon burger this month. Aubrey, what was your first and last meal? Um, Not your last meal, to clarify. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> um, yeah, I think my first meal was just a regular like baked salmon with the spice rub on it, the rub with love, which is delicious. Listeners, if you haven't had it, highly suggest. Um, last meal, <clears throat> I don't remember. Um, it's been a little hectic with the moving over the last week. So I think the last one we did was honestly the smoked salmon that we made for one of the last weeks of fishing in February. Um, and we taste tested it and it was a little on the salty side, but it was good. So, you know, I think that was the last one, but may have been more than a few days ago. It must have been, it must have been how violently they were shaking the cooler and the brine in your, in your video. I know. And like our friend told them not to shake it. And then they are just there <laughs> sloshing it back and forth. But yeah, I think we just didn't 
we just need to rinse a little better next time. Courtney. So mine was the salmon burgers, and my last was the salmon burgers. I just love them. Oh. They're so convenient and just always there for you when you need a meal. <laughs> I had a can of sockeye as my first meal of the month, and last night I finished up with shrimp. Um, made some shrimp last night, which was quick and easy because I got home late. So, yeah. So it was a good month. Um, definitely happy it's over. <laughs> <laughs> At least me. Um, so the next question I have for everybody was um, kind of along the same lines is, and we'll start, we'll go the opposite way. Sure. Um, what was the best thing that you had this month? The best Ooh. meal that you had this month? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you I can't think... say salmon burgers. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, they, I mean, they're already good. Um, so I think the best was we uh, made a Pacific, or not Pacific Cod, Pollock quiche. So I, I just love to make whitefish quiche. Um, it always comes out really, really good, no matter what whitefish you use. And it's really easy to put together with whatever ingredients you have, like any type of cheese, any type of herbs, just throw it all in there together in a pie crust, and it just always comes out great. So that's probably my favorite. I've never done it with whitefish. Yeah. But lots of times with smoked salmon. Yeah, I'm like, I don't, like, I've never made it with smoked salmon personally. I've had it, but never made it. But yeah, we always do it with whitefish, and it's, yeah, it's really good. It did look good in the video that you took of it. Yeah, Parmesan on top. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Cool. Aubrey? Yeah, um, we made those awesome shrimp mango tacos. I think that was probably one of our favorite meals because we've been doing that with our salmon regularly, um, like the recipe we have on the website. And it's definitely just become one of our classic meals. But um, swapping it out with shrimp was really fun uh, to just try out, especially I think like I haven't had shrimp that often. Um, it's kind of been intimidating to me. So to be able to just like finally make a meal out of it and enjoy it and it was all air fried and it was when good. you cooked yourself, yeah, it's extra. Yeah, impressive. exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, Steve, what was your, the best thing that you ate this month? Oh, I'd have to say it was the, uh, the black cod at the black cod dinner date, which you can uh, check out the link below. <laughs> Keeping up with the romance. <laughs> I like it. Jen? Uh, now you have to say the same or else no, I was not, <laughs> not going to say black cod. Uh, I don't often cook with lobster, but the lobster fettuccine was really, really good. But I have a, the calendar worked out really well for me. So I know everything I ate in February. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot to pick from, but uh, I think because I don't eat it all that often, the lobster really stood the out. The pictures you took of it looked awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Megan? Um, so for like half of this, I was healing from some surgery and home and sort of at the whim of uh, my family for, for some of the <laughs> meals. And my grandmother really wanted to make like a fish chowder for me. So I would say it was probably that. She I she had some of the Pacific cod and we she whipped up something from her old world stuff I don't know where she got the recipe from but it was really good and just I think just you know had that love element to it yeah. so yeah now everyone's gonna be jealous because grandma's cooking is always the best I, know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite meal was we did a uh, stuffed salmon and I can't remember if it was a recipe from our website or not but it was a uh, spinach and goat cheese stuffed um, salmon dish that my wife had made which turned out to be, it sounded kind of odd in the beginning. The toughest part was, and I'll have to have Steve or Jen teach me how to do this, was like cutting the salmon filet <laughs> to stuff it. Like that was the most, we found to be the most difficult part of preparing the dish. Did you cut a pocket or did you just yeah, cut Yeah, we it made open? pockets in like, we, we cooked the whole filet, mm -hmm. but just cut like a pocket in each quadrant and then stuffed it to bake yeah right on we'll have to do a so. knife skills video <laughs> yeah it, i think it had a lot to do with my knife because we <laughs> we've been having the discussion of upgrading our knives um especially when we got into the seafood month <laughs> we realized <laughs> we could benefit from some sharper knives um going along with that question was there anything 
that maybe you tried this month that you hadn't tried before and or tried a dish that you weren't fond of or found that you weren't a fan of? Ooh. And I'll just open this up in case I don't know if many people will have it, but. Yeah, there wasn't any that I didn't like, but I think eating as a family, the night that we did the tuna poke bowl, <laughs> um, it, we also fried some of the, uh, pan fried some of the medallions, and the kids didn't really like it that much. Interesting. But I, I always find it like tuna has, out of all the fish that we offer, when you're cooking tuna, it has kind of like the most intense taste, and I think that that throws them off. Yeah. But they did like it raw. Yeah, true. Oh, so that once, is cool. Once we cooked it, it does get a little bit of a different flavor. Mm. And I, that was going to be what I chose. Uh, I like the tuna raw, but once you saute it on one side, it definitely changes the flavor a little bit. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Anybody else had one or an instance? I had one, but it was my fault. It wasn't the fish fault. <laughs> I tried to make the black cod recipe, and it did not turn out. Um <laughs> the same as it tasted the day we shot the video <laughs> so um i'm i i made a decision that i i've got to practice on um a more affordable and lower end white fish for recipes before i start purchasing you must have made it look real easy it's yeah. funny i always yeah. tell people that black cod's the thing like you can leave in the oven forever and it just never yeah. overcooks so that's a testament to my cooking ability <laughs> <laughs> cool um so going to more of in depth into like changing or altering a diet to be seafood based, did anybody have anything surprising like physiologically or mentally that occurred when you were heavily consuming seafood? I know for me, like, Going back to that surgery element, the omega-3s definitely helped with the inflammation. I think they helped with the healing process. Um, so I was kind of excited to do that because I knew it would be something that was more beneficial for that process as well. And I really feel like I did feel a difference the days, especially that I had black cod or salmon, because um, those are the higher ones, mm. that just less pain, less... Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's really yeah, awesome. it's pretty neat. Anyone else? I think for us, like we only were eating two to three times a week, but um, the thing about like eating seafood, and I don't know if this is just our brains, you know, like placebo effect, whatever, but it, you felt a different kind of full, like not a bad full when you ate like a large seafood meal. Um, a lot of times when we'll eat, you know, just throw something together because we're in a hurry or we're short on time and it's not, you know, seafood based or the healthiest thing in the world. Um, like you'd get, you just get so full and then you're like, oh, I can't move. And then you don't feel good. But with seafood, we were noticing that it's like, okay, maybe we were just cutting the portion sizes, right. Or maybe we had just the right amount of shrimp or, you know, whatever, but you just, it's a different kind of full. You're like satisfied full rather than overfeeding yourself. Yeah, I, I noticed I, I noticed the same a similar effect to like but almost saw a difference in salmon versus um like the shellfish because like the shrimp and scallops which I ate a lot of throughout the month like are similar to like a sushi where like you eat them and you're satisfied in the moment but like it feels like it go the the sustenance that you have from them goes away faster Whereas when I was eating sockeye in the various forms, I found that a, I had like an energy boost that I didn't get from the other fish that whatever it is, the sockeye like gave me almost like a caffeine, like energy, which I don't even get from caffeine, <laughs> but gave me this energy that every time I had it, like it would, it would last for like a two or three hour window of like having this boost of energy and I also just felt like satisfied and that even went to like, like canned salmon. Um, I had the retort pouches of smoked salmon for like quick lunches and like any time it was like, and sometimes I would almost like replace a portion of salmon for when I would have a cup of coffee or something mm -hmm. because it was that interesting. Yeah. Effect. Yeah. I think same for us too. Like we made that, um, 
smoked salmon on the bagels, like with the cream cheese spread that Steve and Jen sent us the, the smoked salmon from the holidays, which was delicious. And we're like savoring the last little bit of the last can. Um, but that, yeah, like when we made that for breakfast, I definitely felt so much more like, I don't know, satisfied with breakfast. Usually I do like a bowl of granola and maybe some fruit and you would think, oh, okay, that's like brain booster, whatever. But I don't know something about those bagels and that, that salmon, it was delicious. So I definitely <laughs> felt more, maybe I was just energized on fishing in February and I was like, yeah, this is great. Let's do this for breakfast every day. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, I think when you, when you, uh, use those four ounce retort portions, Dustin, like typically when you're using those, you're, you don't, you're using them because you, you're not cooking dinner and mm-hmm. you're just using them as a substitute. And typically you don't have a lot of extras with it. And I think that's where you see the, um, resilience of it is because it does fill you up and it's only four ounces of straight sockeye. Like I eat them right out of the pouch and they do a great job holding you over. Um, you know, on a lot of hunting trips, I take them for my midday lunch is, is one of those four ounces and it's just, it, it has a lot of weight to it. Yeah. It's almost like those, uh, meal replacement shakes that people typically have mm-hmm. is like, they're just quick and easy that you can like open it up. I think they're what, like a hundred calories per pack or something to that effect. 150 calories per pack. Don't quote me on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're low calorie, but they also just have like a great flavor right out of the pack too, which I love. Like the, the canned salmon, I was surprised cause Steve and I had a conversation before the challenge started about canned salmon. And it's just kind of like one of those things where people can go either way. And I know Jen, you had said that like you had, weren't a fan of the canned salmon so when i tried that as my first meal and the first time i ever tasted it i was surprised at how much i liked it just hearing how like differing opinions there were about it but it was another one that i utilized all month as like a quick and easy way and made like a a salmon salad spread out of it you know just ate it from the can did you go for the boneless skinless or the bone and skin on boneless skinless oh come on i needed to go <laughs> convenient i didn't want to have to wrestle with bones oh you don't have you, you, you don't even em. know they're there yeah, yeah. you just mix oh, really? it right in yeah, yeah. just because okay. the, pr- the way the can's like pressure packed it breaks all the bones down and the skin down so you just mix it up and you don't even oh know really there. i didn't mm-hmm. know that yeah is there is there health benefits from that yeah. like i should know yeah. this but oh yeah you get all the minerals right calcium yeah huge. okay that's why your grandmother recommends it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was uh, the the density of the fish was what I was trying to describe in the yeah. halibut video that we did. But I, I, it's almost like an insult to call it dense because it's a light, fluffy protein, but yet it's it's the holding power that almost makes it feel dense. Mm. Right. Yeah, it was it was a. Th- those were definitely like my savior. The retort pouches and the canned salmon <laughs> were like the the way that helped me get through the month uh, for sure. Um, kind of on that same line, what were what did anyone find was challenging about the month? If anything, remembering to record what I was eating was so <laughs> challenging. <laughs> like you're spending this time cooking, you're so excited about it. And then you like, you sit down and you take like two bites and you're like, ah, like I can't record it now. It doesn't look as good as it did. So, right. Yeah. But that was, you know, minimal compared to all the cooking and things. It, that was all easy. It was just slowing down and actually enjoying what you were eating and recording it. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was just as a family keeping the kids on track and like mm-hmm. not burning them out on seafood. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you say that. I actually fa- actually found that um, we were able to incorporate so much more like seafood and fish. Um, the salad shrimp are perfect for my daughter. She's one and a half. Um, and so now she has those for lunch because they're already cooked. Just pull them out of the freezer. They thaw real fast. Um, and the salmon salad, she would lick it off the crackers. Like didn't even care for the cracker. <laughs> just keep just shoveling it in. It was great. So yeah, like those two things weren't on our normal lunch rotation. And now like she loves it and it's super easy to make. So they're definitely part of it now. Cool. Anybody else have any challenges that they dealt with? Can I share something I thought was a challenge, but wasn't going to be, wasn't? Sure. Um, we thought we were going to struggle with our tiny little convection oven that can fit, you know, on our lap as Dustin also thought it was going to be a struggle for us, but, um, it actually turned out really easy. Like, especially with all the recipes that we were using, even if we were eating a whole filet, that'd be like two servings for each of us, but 
it was, I don't know, it, it worked out really well. And we could really just like put some seafood aside that, you know, if we had too much, we could just store the rest in the fridge or the freezer, remake the rest in this tiny convection oven. And it was honestly just a lot easier to cook for two people in a tiny little kitchen than yeah. we thought. My I first really one. enjoy cooking in the convection oven. Yours is, it's, yeah, you have a really nice it's, one. It's, you can bake in it, you can cook in it. Yeah. And I usually use that over the big oven just for convenience. Yeah, the, the little toaster we have here in the office is what I made the salmon burger in the first time, and it I, was great. It cooked just as fast, I think. So, yeah, it's really nice. Yep. Yeah, I think that the, uh, I was actually surprised. One observation I had is I thought I was going to get super burnt out on the seafood, which I didn't, um, surprisingly. Um, it was more of like, and this was kind of the intent of why we did it the way we did, was like how – Limiting to wild caught affected my social life in February, <laughs> like greatly, because like my family, we are very big on like getting out, going out with friends, you know, going to dinner, traveling, doing these things on the weekends. And it really like because I was like laser focused on accomplishing my goal, like I was turning down, like going to dinner with people. I'm like, I can't go because there's nowhere that, you know. And so like that was interesting to me is like it was like the social aspect as well as like if you lived in an area that you didn't have access to like a variety of wild seafood, like you could get burned out quickly. Like even one of the examples was like all the dips and spreads we have at the store like almost like substituted what you would do for like a snack like hummus or you know all these other you know dips and things that you would use just in um everyday life like there was like a substitute for everything almost and mm -hmm. i think that that's where i i found the most challenging part was like kind of that social and variety piece yeah, being that we were traveling um, on the West Coast there in the beginning of the month, it it was very easy to find good <laughs> wild seafood. I did get burned out on cod and chips, though, and that's usually the first thing I order when I'm on, <laughs> on a travel. I'd love to kind of check them out, but um, I think I had those four four times in, in five days. Wow. But uh, so the, and that was more of a grease issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting, like Aubrey pointed out in a couple of her vlogs that like – going to just out to eat like verifying on the menu either on the menu or with the chef that something was wild caught or in the grocery store like picking up wild sockeye and wild shrimp being located in the seafood section like that was like you realize how like doing this challenge in various parts of the country could you know increase or decrease the difficulty did you have anybody that you did hang out with that you introduced to something new um, or made made try something. No, because I kind of just kept everybody away. Oh no! I was just like, <laughs> don't bring food over here. Um, no, I think that the toughest part was just more like I had to utilize the easy to go options and just take them with me when I would like go somewhere. Right. Which like, you know, if you're on a diet or if you're dieting or you have some type of dietary restriction, like it kind of gave me a glimpse in like what it's like living life like that all the time. <laughs> that like if you're trying to find options is like very limited. Um, so it was just more of like, I like now being free to just say like, yeah, like I can find something on the menu there. But, um, but as far as like the burnout, like I didn't, I wasn't sick of seafood. I'm it still is, not. Like, it's I'm awesome not. how much you can transform like all of the different types of seafood, even individually. Like mm -hmm. we had portions for dinner and then the next day it turns into salmon salad or you throw it in with your eggs and then, you know, in a wrap for breakfast, like, and every way you can season it a little different and it's got like the tacos and it's always got a little, little different kick to it, even within all the different types of seafood. Yeah. The other thing I was found interesting was the, the way that you can spin seafood, especially if it's put in a various form, like with different flavor profiles, mm -hmm. like that's what I really, and actually everyone on the team like helped spark the ideas to help keep my month fresh <laughs> from like seeing what all of you were doing with your recipes. Like 
Megan's Grilled Cheese. Oh, that's like, how you got through it. Now we start. I copy that. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then like the burgers, like the way that everyone was utilizing burgers, like really like. I was like, what? Like, I was just utilizing them as, like, cooking a – grilling a salmon burger and putting it on a bun for dinner. But, like, when you all were doing with the um, breakfast sandwiches, yeah, like, was like, oh, I never thought about that. And then, like, it kind of, like, motivated me at the end. The last One of the last meals I had last week was um, I did, like, a Western barbecue salmon burger, and I was, like, kind of just jonesing for, like, some like ribs or or <laughs> steak. Here's a little fun fact: those uh, spicy salmon burgers used to be called salmon sausage. Really? Uh, yeah, because they have the hot sausage flavor. Yeah, we still um, have some customers ask for them that way. Yeah, but we changed the name because people were confused with mm. sausage and pork and like what was the main right ingredient, which is mm. uh, of course 100% salmon. But um, the sausage word was taken a little <laughs> differently. Yeah, we were super jealous of that over here. I have to say, like, I know we, I got, we've got all this wild seafood over here, whatever. But like, when we would go to the store, there would be, you know, like, um, prepackaged salmon patties. But they didn't, I don't know, they they didn't like try on their appearance that much. But the ones that you guys had, I was like, can we just ship some over? Like that, just let's just <laughs> let's go online and buy some. When you come to Pennsylvania, we'll have them ready for you. Yeah. I'm gonna have to figure out how to stock up on them. I was telling Christian this. Like, can we buy me a freezer to fly, like a little cooler to fly home with, with all those salmon patties? Because every single video, yeah, where you guys were using those, and then I was realizing like Dustin made one too. Everyone was starting to have the salmon burgers. I was just like, ah, oh, man, I feel a little left out here. <laughs> yeah, the other. The other fun fact is we started making those in a, in a Cuisinart uh, kitchen mixer. So doing the, the trials on them and they make, makes a really good job of chopping it up. So you can just take a, a salmon filet if you're that daring and, and dice it up and make it into burger cooking video <laughs> idea. Lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Uh, the other thing was I wanted to just kind of throw out there was, Next February, 2023, what would you do differently if you did the month over again? Or what will you do next time? Um, well, so this time I had tried to use everything that I had in my freezer because I had so much. Like you, at the end of the day, you're in the office and you're like, oh, I'll take this home for work or for dinner. And you grab a couple other things and like it accumulated over time. And because you can always get something new in the store when you're there every day. But um, yeah, I, even that we had like, portions like sockeye portions we had a couple of the white fish of course we had burgers but like i didn't have any scallops i didn't have the raviolis i didn't have the shrimp like there were so many other awesome things that like i missed out on because i was just using what mm. i had on hand but i think the, i'm jealous of all your variety in <laughs> other words <laughs> i think if it were just a salmon contest i would have been totally burned out yeah right but because there was options well see you, really nice. you did that for what was it 15 days before you hunted it's like no, it didn't last that long. We was, I was going, oh. I was going to, and then um, I just with the cooking with the kids yeah, is yeah. where it came to like I started to want to have salmon every night, and it was just like this isn't gonna work. I, I mean, it's, it's hardcore for sure. Yeah. Aubrey I, or Megan, did you have anything that you would change next time? I I agree. I think more variety. Like, I mean, we've got options over here and you guys were kind of talking about that earlier about how accessible it is but at the same time like I guess because it's so accessible over here no one really showcases the fact that it's mostly like wild caught seafood because we do have farmed seafood in the store um so like we would just go and we would look for the wild salmon or use the wild salmon that we had from our freezer and that was kind of what we started doing and what we would get used to and then the shrimp was really the only different thing we ate and we were like oh yeah it's wild caught whatever right there but um like there's i think there's so many more options that we're just not aware of but at the same time they don't make it obvious in the store so we kind of got lazy and weren't checking to see if there was like more wild caught things so we were almost like yeah we don't uh, we don't even want to go to the grocery store we like we just want to order it to the house like our wild caught so we know it's all good we don't have to confirm because it's it's like choice overload you know when you're over here on the west coast so yeah, I think like 
order a big giant case from wild for salmon. So we have a ton of variety, fill the freezer and then work through that for the month. I, I think I'd prefer to do that and almost oh, like over going out to eat just because it's more of a challenge. Like you're part of the cooking too, you know, like it's nice that we can go and get wild seafood in a lot of different places here or, you know, fish and chips like Steve and Jen had, but when you're cooking it yourself, I think it makes a huge difference. And it was really fun to explore that. So I think more of that and more types of seafood. I think it'd be really interesting too, to um, ask more often, like when you're at a restaurant or at the grocery store, ask the staff there if it's wild caught and like see where that conversation goes. I mean, it's like a little uncomfortable at first, but the more you do it, I'm sure the more comfortable. And like, I know all of us would be like, oh yeah, let me, let me tell you about wild caught seafood since, <laughs> since you're going to go talk to the chef. Like, but I think, I do think it'd be neat to see how all those conversations go down. Cause like, Aubrey, like you said, it's probably no question in anybody's mind there when you confirm, but here people probably look at you a little silly. It was actually not though. Like I really? confirmed that first day. Yeah. With, um, like salmon dip and pita bread. I had that when I was out eating lunch with my parents and I went up and asked them, um, cause they just said salmon dip on the menu. And I was like, Hey, kind of a funky question, but is this salmon like wild caught? And the, the person at the cashier was like, Oh, um, I don't know. And then just kind of looked at me like, why do you want to know? Why do you care? Which was so weird because I was like, well, the sea is like right there. I would hope yeah, right. it's like, but then, um, yeah, the, like the chef was like further down the bar and happened, happened to be right there and was like, it is, don't worry. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. You get it. You know, yeah. but like <laughs> the, the people that were working there otherwise were like, oh, I don't know. I didn't even think about it. So like, it is still pretty common here, especially because like in Puget Sound, they have had, you know, like farmed salmon. And so I think even living in a place like this, that's rich with wild seafood, a lot of people don't understand the difference or the fact that a lot of people prefer wild caught salmon. The fact that the chef clearly did though, is like, yeah, that was, it made me feel a lot better. I was like, okay, this is a good choice. He knew the quality and knew what you, why you were (laughs) asking. So yeah, we just need to Make sure everybody knows that. <laughs> Anybody else? I'd probably step up to the 100%. Um, <laughs> that was my next question, Steve, <laughs> was who who around the table now feels comfortable or confident that next year they're going to do 100%? Yeah, I think I would. Um, you know, it was... It was nice to have throw some meat options in there, especially with the family and cooking around that. But also, you know, the biggest part I wanted to get out of the the fishing in February was just challenging yourself to use the same products in different ways and come up with new recipes, like not new full blown recipes, but like quick how to's um, and, and, and get things, you know, repurposed. And I think that that's the fun kind of takeaway out of fishing in February for me too was is just like the chat, like forcing yourself to up your game on your cooking skills and your creativeness. And, you know, like it forces you even think out of the box of what you would have normally done. So I think looking into next year, it's only going to up the game. You guys are all going to come to the table with 12 <laughs> months of ideas of mm-hmm. like, and a calendar like Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants so, one for next month too? Uh, she's, she's into it. I feel like, Megan, you probably would do 100, wouldn't you? I mean, if you were going to challenge me to do it, then <laughs> yes. You had mentioned if someone before dared we me. started that you were, pre- you were pretty close to like your, the majority of your weeks are normally seafood. I mean, the uh, the five to seven was very easy for me. Okay. I think that was just because. See? So, yeah. I mean, if I, if I was going <laughs> to try to make it more challenging, I think I would. I, the biggest piece for me is like I'm cooking for one. I'm um, like not so much into focusing on recipes and stuff so I think maybe making it more social of cooking for other people like that part of it would have to be implemented to to keep it interesting yeah yeah that was the one thing that I found too was like when like like my my family did up their seafood game but not to the level I did and that was where I found like at the end of the day it was almost like a burden when like I come home and like they had steak or they had tacos and I'm like uh, to thaw a salmon burger. It was like almost like, like it became like, Oh, I just have to make something different. You know, it just is not as convenient, but 
Um, but I still was like, I didn't get burnt out from doing it, which. So coming off of 100% seafood, what is your month of March going to be look like? Because I think <laughs> that's going to be the, the tall tale of whether <laughs> you're like, yeah. I'm done with seafood for the month. <laughs> Well, it's funny because I, I, when I left this morning, I said today's March 1st, um, but I left and I said to my wife, I said, oh, so we're having steak for dinner tonight? And she's like, actually, I was going to thaw one of the salmon fillets that we have <laughs> left in the freezer. <laughs> but no, I think it's like, I think I'm definitely going to translate to like no problem, like having seafood more regularly because I've already just like. Like I said, I'm not burnt out of it, right. which I'm supr- highly surprised. Like I thought I was me going too, me too. To go on, <laughs> go on a month bender in March for like you know red meat, but it's it's really like I think that it's really and coming from my background with salmon, like I was never a fan of salmon prior to trying wild caught salmon, and like I'm not just saying this as a sales pitch, even though it sounds like a sales pitch, <laughs> that like and I hear so many people. Where, talk about where i was too with like oh i don't like the taste and now it's like that's my preferred seafood when i'm eating like this month i'm like and i love shrimp i love scallops i love you know white fish but still i'll go to sockeye now like default (laughs) as my preferred and it's like crazy how your palate um like when it experiences something and mentally you think of one thing and then it changes and it just like rocks your world with like, wow, I just can't believe them. And now, like, that's what I prefer. So we had um, chosen the five to seven servings a week, which is pretty weak, of course. Um, <laughs> but that's probably <laughs> about our average. <laughs> we ate about at least 10 plus, but the next level up was 100 percent. So maybe we need to check the levels again you know like mm. instead of going from five to seven to 21 21 <laughs> there should be a like a, another layer in there just I, I can't because i do the cooking for the kids too it would be really tough yeah i'd be making i think when you hear five to seven too you think it's dinner every day but then once you consider the fact you're eating three meals a day and how you can work it into your breakfast and when you are eating lunch alone like it's the it's way more convenient than when you what you realize initially so well, I think what's interesting is that, and no offense to Courtney and Aubrey, <laughs> but the recommended consumption is like two to three a week, it, which yeah. seems very weak to me, like like not coming out of 100% maybe, but like it just seems like that's not a lot. I agree. I mean, we once like I sat down and looked at the like what we were going to cook for the week. I was like, man, we would do this already. Like it wasn't so much as a challenge to like it. I definitely could have put more effort into eating it more often throughout than more often than two or three times, especially once I looked at breakfast and lunches like. Right. But, you know, they don't have recommendations for like chicken and beef. They don't Mm -hmm. say you should eat X amount of servings of beef or chicken yeah per week they just say that about seafood because of the health benefits so i think that's probably all they th- people think that they can do i mean if you told somebody they should eat five to six they probably would just yeah. not start at all and there's such a difference like in the nutrient value of salmon across like farmed or the location what river ocean whatever it comes out of uh, that affects the consumption rate so if you can find like the cleanest truest wild caught like sockeye salmon you could eat it way more times clearly and gain all those benefits yeah i think that's the big difference between us and the listeners like the listeners are out there you know wherever they're living they don't have access to 70 products that are like got the a plus rating for quality and nutritional value and just like top of the line so for us we 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 don't even have to deal with like going and finding the quality of product that meets our standards it's all right in front of us so it's just like a it's a gimme on that piece of it so oh I yes they do www.com <laughs> <laughs> right to your door that was your sales pitch I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sales pitch <laughs> no that's true though i think it's like yeah i couldn't imagine like if i didn't have the store like it would be impossible like like yeah. that i could go there every and shop like a grocery store and like stock up on my protein. I think that's what Aubrey was referring to. Yeah. It just felt harder for her. 
Yeah, honestly, though, it, it did. I think like I'd rather just have the ability to not have to be going through checking and sifting through. And like, I was honestly surprised at the amount of shelving displays that were like, I mean, you can tell the difference between farm salmon and wild salmon from a mile away when you're walking up to a display case, right? Like just the color and the fat and the, like all of that's easy from someone who's, you know, learning about seafood and marketing it every day. But I was surprised at the amount of signage there was for organic farmed seafood and no signage for the wild seafood. Like it made it more difficult to find. And I was like, this seems like a backwards thing to be advertising in the Pacific Northwest. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it, it made it a little more difficult to, there was just so much that I was like, literally anything here is probably wild caught. But then at the same time, they have this giant display for something that's farmed. So maybe I don't know. So I think it would just be so much easier to, I mean, do exactly what we're offering people. Again, it sounds like a plug, but it honestly, <laughs> like after a month of doing this, I think it would have been so much easier to have just ordered a giant case and then fill the freezer and not even had to worry about checking any labels, not gotten overloaded at the store and being like, okay, I know there's a ton of wild caught because I'm in a place where it's accessible, but they also have this farmed thing and it says it's organic and maybe it's a good thing. I don't know. What's the difference? Like with ordering from wild for salmon, <laughs> this is a plug. Let's just call it a plug. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it would have just been so much easier and it would have saved us like trips to the grocery store and, um, something else too, about like eating the number of meals per week. Like, yeah, we did about two and coming from maybe one before that. And basically none before I started working, um, for wild for salmon, like we, we could have done it so many more easily. And we were like sending recipes back and forth to each other during the day. And it was something we were looking forward to when we would get off work or, you know, get home, we were like, oh, okay, what are we going to make? Or, oh, okay, I'll go get the, you know, the, the queso fresco for the tos the tacos. And, you know, it was, it was like a fun deal. And we basically got so used to sockeye as our standard that it, like, we felt like we could have been so much more creative, I think. So did, did you, did you ever end up trying scallops this month or no? No, I didn't. Cause I'm, I'm honestly, no. I'm, I'm no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't because I'm saving that for when I'm there in Pennsylvania, because I want to try the wild for salmon ones, because otherwise, like, I don't know, I can go to the store and I can be like, okay, these are wild caught, I guess. I don't know. But like with wild, like I know by getting it through wild for salmon, I'm going to get like quality stuff. You know, I don't know. It just, it maybe again, like it's all the same thing, but it makes me feel better. So I want to, I want my first scallops to be wild for salmon scallops. <laughs> We're going to have to plan a whole bunch of like, we might as well do dinner and fish, fish, fish every meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, every Nate, meal. like Megan was saying earlier, it's going to be a social thing and you can start cooking for people. So maybe yeah. you'll have to cook for me while I'm visiting. There you go. Anybody have any closing thoughts on the month that they would like to share with everybody? I think it was neat how many um, people like other people within the business and um, like just like my family and things that heard about it and then interacted with me uh, like what, what they were eating too. So like my grandma listened to the first podcast and called me and was like, oh, that just sounds so good. Can you send me some? Like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like you can call me anytime. But um, yeah, like that. And then other employees like sending me pictures of what they were cooking and uh, just like it was neat to see how it grew and I can't wait for it to grow like even more next year. Yeah. That was definitely a surprise to see the rest of the team like step in. Like we almost feel like we left them out, you right. know, we didn't include them cause we didn't think they would be interested. Mm -hmm. And I think they were kind of actually Jones and to be part of it. So that'll be for next year. Yeah. Anybody else? I really like my calendar. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it, it, it helped me plan ahead. Because yeah. usually it's I'm on my way home from work and I'm thinking, what am I going right. to pull out in fall? But so all so there for next out. year, when we open it up to our customers and fans to participate, we'll have to get blank calendar downloadable calendars put yeah. on the website for people for sure to utilize. I'm going to stick this in my pantry. And then when I don't know what to make for dinner, I can just look at all the yellow highlighted yeah. fish. And that's a good idea. A grand idea. So, oh no, like all of them are yellow. I thought maybe well, it was like your favorite all ones. All of the yellow ones are 
seafood. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Wow. So yeah. everything that's not yellow was not seafood. How many new recipes did you end up trying to make? About nine. Wow, that's wow. cool. And for those who can't see, Jen's calendar looks like a March Madness bracket. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> highlighted, eliminated. Um, cool. Well, thank you, everybody, and good job in for the month. Good job for you. You did. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm ready for some red meat <laughs> today. And salmon tomorrow. Salmon tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Thank you. We'll see you next week.